I'm back at the lab protocol and I need to download this virtual collisions spreadsheet. I'm gonna download it, Excel spreadsheet and open it here. Okay, so here's what it looks like. Let me um, maximize it here, right? There are two tabs. One tab is inelastic collisions. The other tab is elastic collisions. So activity one is elastic collisions. Let's click on that tab first. Let me enlarge it so you can see it a little bit better. Here I have my four experiments for elastic, perfectly elastic collisions. Um, we just saw the simulation for uh, what happens with the collision when we have both balls having the same mass of one kilogram. Uh, ball one had a velocity of 0.5 meters per second. Ball two had uh, started from rest. And after the collision, we saw that ball one ended up coming to rest and ball two had a velocity of 0.5 meters per second. So it's, um, you know, if we're conserving momentum, it makes sense that if both of these masses are the same size, if one of them is at rest, the other one has some velocity and we're conserving momentum, the momentum before the collision has to be the same as the momentum after. So if both of the balls are the same mass, one is stationary, the other one is coming in with some velocity, you're just gonna transfer exactly the momentum from ball one to ball two. So then ball one is going to end up being the stationary one after the collision and ball two will continue on with the momentum that ball one had to start with. So let's calculate the initial momentum of, of each one of these balls, the momentum that they have before the collision. Use the beauty of Excel, the power of Excel to help you do these calculations. So we've done this in lab a few times. To find the momentum, no, no, the, the momentum is the mass times velocity. So the initial momentum, I'm going to say equals the mass of the ball times its initial velocity. Okay, 0.5 meters per second, or sorry, 0.5 kilogram meters per second because remember the unit of momentum is kilogram meter over second. Now I can just put my mouse in the little corner here so I get this black X or plus sign and I can drag down that equation and it calculates the momentum for the first ball before the collision, which is zero. Then after the collision, the momentum will equal the mass times the final velocity, enter. So the second ball has no or the first ball has no momentum after the collision, but the second ball does. I can copy down that equation. And then my initial kinetic energy is going to equal one half, or I'm going to type 0.5 times the mass times the initial velocity squared. Okay, and that's the initial velocity for ball one, or sorry, the initial kinetic energy for ball one. And I'm going to copy that equation down so oh, ball two has no kinetic energy because it's not in motion before the collision. And then similarly, kinetic energy is equal to one half or 0.5 times mass times, this is our final velocity, so times the final velocity squared. Okay, so now we have um, calculated the initial and final potentials for both the balls and the initial and final kinetic energies. Then I want you to find the total of the initial momentum, final momentum, initial kinetic energy, final kinetic energy. So for here, we're just gonna say, so if we're gonna find the total of the initial potential, uh, the initial momentum, I'm going to say equals sum. I'm gonna sum up these two quantities here, enter, okay? And now I'm gonna drag this equation to the right. So now it's copying that sum. I wanna sum everything in the two cells above, All right? So what this is telling us is that for the first experiment, the momentum before the collision and after the collision are equal. The kinetic energy before the collision and after the collision are equal, which should be the case because we have this perfectly elastic collision which means that the, potent, or the momentum before and after the collision is conserved, the kinetic energy before and after the collision is conserved. You're going to do the same process for each experiment. 
get the initial and final momentum, initial and final kinetic energy, and see if the sum of those are conserved before and after the collision. And you will do the exact same thing for the inelastic collisions. So you see here that all of that looks exactly the same. Um, and you're going to calculate the same quantities. You're going to get the velocities of both of the balls after the collisions from the simulation. And then you're going to put that in here to the, um, the spreadsheet. And you're going to check, was momentum in fact conserved? Was kinetic energy conserved? With that, I'm going to leave you here and um, harness the power of Excel in order to help you more efficiently, quick, more quickly complete the spreadsheet, which you will upload and send to me. And I will, I, I, you know, when you send these to me, I can also check, I can click in those cells and check to see if you are using those equations or not. Now I'm not requiring that you do those calculations in Excel, but trust me, if you use the power of Excel, you will be able to complete any lab that we use um, Excel for much more quickly and with much less headache if you put the time in to understanding how to enter those equations.